Hello guys, welcome back to another video and this time we are going to be solving the lab CSRF where token validation depends on request method. So I'm going to go and open this up and till the time this is loading, let's quickly see what a CSRF attack is and basically what we want in this. So a CSRF attack is in this, basically you're going to be sending a request from the victim and the way the request is going, it's going to change some state changes. Basically, we are making the victim or the person going through some changes, which the user doesn't want. But the user doesn't realize he made those changes because all we sent him is a link. And that link is our link which we craft with the CSRF. Okay, so quickly let's look at this lab. And as you can see in this lab, we have a login page and we have been given login credentials. So let's quickly log in with that. Peter and Peter. So after I've logged in, this is how it looks like. It has a functionality of changing your email. And it shows your username and your email. Okay, so let me go and turn the interceptors on and send some request okay so i'm um proxying it via book suite so let's say i'm making the email as um a at the rate gmail.com if i update it you can see this is the kind of request it is coming okay so after sending it you can say it says a at the rate gmail.com so this now i have kept it here in the repeater tab and now if I change it from AAA, let's say if I make it BBB and I send it, then you can clearly see this is now changed to BBB. So this request is what is making change. Okay, you can change your email functionality via this request. Okay, now for a CSRF attack to happen as an attacker, what I don't, I can only give him predictable values. I cannot give him unpredictable values. Why? Because when I am forging a request and I'm making this request in behalf of that person, I actually cannot predict the CSRF token. So this I can predict. This I can say, let's say it should be attacker at the rate gmail.com or okay. So this I can predict, but I cannot predict the CSRF token. So let's say if I put some other CRF, CSRF token, it just gives me another. That's an invalid CSRF token. If I remove the token, it, I'll still get an error. That is, it is missing this parameter. Okay. Now, one thing what I'm gonna, gonna try over here is, rather than post, if I make the request as get. Okay. I'll make the request as get. So I'm changing it in the burp suite itself. And it says missing parameter email. Okay, so I'm gonna push in an email parameter, just bear with me, I'll explain it in a second. As of now, you can see it's still bbb at the gmail.com, it's still not changed. Now if I provide it with something like this, and I'll remove this, and I'll send this, you can see it has now been changed to the value which I wanted. Okay, so basically this is the reasoning or the logic behind it is that mostly all the state changing parameters happen via post request, but sometimes due to functionality or by the developer, like it's the developer's wish how he wants to make it, the way he made the application is, he's allowing a state changing operation even via a get method. So basically not only can you submit post method, but you can also submit a get method and in that get method, via using that get method, you are able to change that attacker's email. All right. So basically, a CSRF attack is actually speaking not needed over here. All you need to do is send the victim this URL. So you can just go and copy URL. And if you just send the victim this URL, right, which says uh, email is equal to this one, just this URL, and automatically his email would change. So uh, in this scenario, CSRF is actually speaking not required. Secondly, what they want to teach you over here is that a CSRF attack is basically protection against post-based endpoints because mostly state changing operations happen only in post. 
so they do not have a token system in get so what they do is for get endpoints they do not have they do not make a csrf token at all so over here even though it's a get request i i don't need to send a csrf token while for all post requests i would require to send a csrf token so that's the logic that for get request usually csrf tokens are not needed and as you can see over here in this get request uh, i am without with using or without having any predictable value i am just um, get able to get this um, change like the play, i am able to get this way through which i can change the email now i just need to send this email to the victim and that's it but for this lab let's quickly go through the csrf method they want us to go through with and i'll just co copy this is the sample crf thing which you know which we need to use okay and uh, this is the sample html request so basically it's an uh, html page which will send a request to whatever url we want and this is a post request but we'll make it get and this is the values which you want to send okay so let's quickly copy this over here i would paste it here then i need to change the url to the url which i want so i'll just copy this url and i'll make the change here but i don't want i just want it till slash change email as you can see this is still slash change email and this other part this other part i'll send it in the parameter okay so as you can see this other part i'm sending it in email and this is the parameter part which i'm sending okay so let's say i'll make this cccc at the rate gmail.com okay so this is what i'm gonna send what is this gonna do is that it's auto go automatically gonna submit what it's gonna submit to this url with this value of email which is being equal to cc at the rate gmail.com and then next up let's just copy this and i'm gonna um make a file over here html file uh, name is csr html and i'm gonna paste this over here and i'm gonna say control okay okay one change which i forgot to do is this is not a post request it's a get request okay so rather than e method equal to post i can actually remove this i don't need to have it but let me make it get control o enter control x i have now saved it okay so uh what i want to do now is that is that i'll just have a poc ready so this is my account so a csrf attack if it is working for the victim it should also work for me so yeah right now it's attacker at the gmail.com if i click this this will make it to ccc at the rate gmail.com so automatically automatically this request has went through this request of changing so where is it this one at the rate ccc.com as you can see i am proxying it and i opened the file which i just made right now and still it came here because it will it sent this request and then redirected me over here now i know since it's working for me it will also work for the victim okay so i'll just do nano again and i'll change it to some other email e e e and i'll just enter and save it okay now let me just cat this file copy this is a payload now i'm going to the exploit server and in exploit server in the body section i'll paste it no need to change the head or any of this so basically what this is telling is this is your payload this is like a web page so just like how i opened a web page this is telling this is a web page now once i store it means i have saved it then when i say view exploit it is basically it will work for me view exploit is like me clicking it and as you can see it changed to ee okay now i want to if i click deliver to victim it will deliver to victim but let's change this again to fffff and let's now i'm going to store it again that is save it again and then deliver exploit to the victim so when i deliver it to the victim the victim will automatically open it and once he open it his email will automatically change all right and this is the function this is the thing which we had to do
this was the aim and this was the goal and why is this vulnerable and why is this sensitive why because you are able to change someone else's thing without his authority or permission that's why this shouldn't be there and secure method should be built in thank you